Welcome to the Transcendent Minds podcast, the podcast where we explore the mysteries of the mind and the human experience. Join us as we delve into topics such as consciousness, spirituality, and personal growth with expert guests and thought-provoking discussions. Get ready to expand your mind and discover new insights on this journey of self-discovery. Now here's your host, Peter Michael Deeds. In the moments before I embark on this episode, together with Jacqueline Ortiz, I find myself enveloped in a bittersweet cascade of emotions. Today, I stand here not just as a host, as a friend, a confidant, and a bearer of cherished memories. Jacqueline Ortiz's name will remain in the echoes of the halls of memory, She was not just a guest on this podcast. She was my soul sister, a kindred spirit whose light illuminated every corner of our shared space. Her laughter was infectious, her wisdom profound, and her spirit indomitable. As I reflect on the time we spent together, I'm reminded of the warmth of her presence, the depth and insight and the beauty of her soul. Jacqueline approached life with a rare blend of courage and grace, navigating its winding paths without wavering and with determination and boundless compassion. Her sudden departure from this world leaves behind a profound void. Her silence reverberates with the echoes of her laughter and the resonance of wisdom. Yet, even as I grapple with the enormity of her loss... I also want to celebrate the gift of her presence. Jacqueline's legacy transcends the boundaries of time and space, woven into the tapestry of our memories and etched into the fabric of our hearts. Though she may no longer walk amongst us, her spirit lives on in the gentle whisper of the wind and in the vibrant hues of a sunset and the quieter moments of reflection. And as I prepare to share this recording of our conversation, I do so with a profound sense of reverence and gratitude. Jacqueline's words resonate with newfound poignancy, her laughter echoing through the corridors of time, a testament to the enduring power of her spirit. So I want to take this opportunity to honour her memory, not with tears of sorrow, but with smiles of remembrance, knowing that she touched my life in ways that words cannot express. Jacqueline Ortiz, you will forever hold a special place in my heart and a guiding light in the darkness and a beacon of hope and inspiration. Now we'll dive into the conversation. Today, I have an incredible guest who's all about helping you turn your ordinary life into an extraordinary one. If you've ever felt restless, discouraged, disconnected, or simply unsatisfied with your life, this is the episode you've been waiting for. My guest today is none other than Jacqueline Ortiz, also known as the Self-Love Deeper. Jacqueline is a self-love and empowerment mentor and the author of Extraordinary You, a synergistic approach to transforming your life from ordinary to extraordinary. She's here to share her insights and expertise on how to make that quantum leap forward in designing your ideal life and career. Welcome to the Transcendent Minds podcast, Jacqueline. I am thrilled, beyond thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're most welcome. Give us a little bit about your backstory. Wow, my backstory. It started with, I always thought if I did enough, if I achieved enough, if I acquire enough, I would feel good enough. But on the inside, I didn't feel good enough. On the outside, people would think I had the most extraordinary life. At the time, I was a financial consultant, married, big house, fancy cars, traveling, everything. Everybody would say, oh my gosh, she's got the life. But I felt guilty even saying that I didn't have it because inside, I didn't feel that way. So fast forward, I then decided to do with my husband at the time, which now my ex-husband, we decided to go into restaurant business in Florida. So we moved to Florida because he almost died. He lost everything. So then I became a restaurateur. So we owned five restaurants at one time and we had all this stress and all this stuff going on. And then not only did he become 
my ex-husband, he also became my partner. So we're working together, living together. Can you imagine? And just doing everything. So I was working at the time, 80 plus hour work weeks. There was a bogus lawsuit. I call it the perfect storm. High stress, high cortisol. My hormones were out of whack. Then one thing after another, and basically I was working 80 hour work week, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Because even one of the restaurants open 24 seven, 365 days. So I was always on beeping and phone calls and putting out fires and running around like crazy until one day I couldn't do anymore. So what I did was I called my ex-husband business partner at almost midnight. I woke him up and his girlfriend, I go, I got to go. He goes, what are you talking about? I got to go. He goes, where are you going? Now? I don't know. And the next morning I packed up everything I could and I started driving. I didn't know where I was going, what anything. And I don't have kids, but if you have kids, the kids, I was like, mommy, when are we going to get there? We almost there yet? That was my mom. She kept calling me. Are you there yet? Are you there yet? I go, mom, I don't know where I'm going, but I just know I got to go. So I kept driving and driving. I drove cross country from Fort Lauderdale, Florida area, Booker Town area, all the way to California and then back to Scottsdale. And then my long self-discovery journey, what I learned was that I had spent all my life trying to people please, being a doormat, trying to help other people, trying to do everything, all the right things for all the wrong reasons. I was doing it to get validation, approval, and love. But you can't get any of that until first you love yourself. And that was the, my self-discovery journey. And that's why I discovered I got centered and I went back. And when I ran away, I ran straight into my heart. And that was the most powerful journey in the world because I learned self-love self-validation, self-respect, self-empowerment, and to really feel good about yourself. And that shifted everything in my life. And that is what I am absolutely devoted. I call it my BMP. I don't know how to do sports, but most valuable player, I call it my mission, my vision, and my passion is the quantum self-love movement to inspire eight plus million people to do a loving thing for themselves and to pass it forward. So then we could create a heart-centered unity of love, light, and unity. And that is my passion and my mission. And that's why I'm here with you, Peter, today. Beautiful. Love that. Beautiful message. Before we go forward, let's go back. And I want to look at your childhood inspiration because it's clear to me you've dedicated your life to helping others transform themselves and find self-love. Can you share a personal experience or a moment from your childhood or early life that inspired you to embark on this path of self-empowerment and mentorship? There's so many. My grandmother, Dita, today is the day she went to heaven. Actually, today's her anniversary. She went to heaven eight years ago. Dita, which was my grandmother. I, I love her. And um, I call her my mom too, because my mom and my grandmother, we all live together. So anyway, so my Dita, my grandmother, she always inspired me to always follow your heart and to believe in yourself. And she came from an era where it wasn't like that. Her husband was not, let's just say that, the best. And she left and got divorced at a time when that wasn't very, very common at all. And after that, she never dated. She never did anything. She said, I am only going to be sovereign to myself after what he did to her. So I think she was traumatized. Obviously, she was. Never dated again, never anything. But what she did was have a deep sense of self-love. And she realized that the most important thing is to give. I have never met such a heart-centered woman. Even now, when we go back to my grandmother's country, people still say how she gave to them and gave to them. I remember this lady, she's not my aunt, but Spanish people always call family, everybody. And she told my mom when my mom went to see her husband who had just passed away. She goes, thank God for your mom, my tita, because she gave her so much money and so much clothes and stuff because they have five little girls. He goes, because of her, I was able to put it on the table. She would just give and she didn't have much, but she gave everything away because she goes, it's like the universe of boomerang, whatever you give comes back. She goes, I don't know how to translate into English, but it's basically something along the lines, give everything you have, it'll come back to you. You don't know from where, but it'll come back to you. That's the way the universe is. And she would give. And that was a good thing also, how much she gave. But in another sense, it also taught me to give so much that I forgot to fill my own tanks. That was the only back to that, backside to that, because she was overgiving to the excess. And that's the way I used to be. But I didn't realize about boundaries back then that, yes, give, but if you don't fill your own tanks, then you're giving from exhaustion. You're giving from the fumes. I want everyone, including myself, to give from overflowing. When we have so much to give, so much overflow, that it's going from a sense of love and generosity, not scarcity or what's in it for me. Or, oh my God, where am I going to get my next 
quarter or whatever it is. And that used to be me. I used to give until there was nothing left of me. And now I give so much more because now I'm tuned in. I call it tuned in, tune up and turn on the high vibration to source, to whatever. So when I'm giving from the heart, everything I got, but I just keeps getting replenished because now I'm learning first to tune into me and love me. And then everything else is overflow excess. It's clear you're on time and in tune uh, and on track with the cyclical wash of the divine and uh, that's evident in your energy because that's gushing it's the overflow this is important for many people to understand about self-love because when people look in the mirror they tend to see the reflection of where they are right now as distinct from what do they actually want to see what reflection do they want to see and to shape that reflection in their mind. Something I want to ask you is that for people listening, what would be the first step someone should take if they want to begin cultivating a deeper sense of self-worth and self-confidence? I love to love bomb. And I know love bomb has a negative connotation where someone loves bomb, you from an artist. I say love bomb yourself. Everything you always give to someone else, give, give, is it the love language that you really need to give to yourself. For instance, if you love to give words of affirmation, that's what you are deeply in need of for yourself. And I truly believe it's about what I call, it, if you don't mind, the six-step high vibrating printing system, where I think the most important thing is to really, step number one, is to recognize, become aware of where you are right now. Step number two is to regress. Go back in time when you get triggered with something. And what was that trigger? What was the earliest recollection? Just like you asked me an earlier time. When was the earliest time that you could remember whatever that trigger was for you and go back, not to recite, but to revisit and get the golden nuggets, the lessons. And you get that. And then what you do is you reframe it. Everything, you question, question, because a truth is something that's a truth for everybody, not just for you. A truth is something that's universal, like the sun rises or a sunset. And everything else I believe could be a lie that you keep telling yourself over and over again that has become a belief. And if you look at the word believe, inside the word believe, it's the word lie, L-I-E. It's a lie you've been telling yourself. So what is that lie that's not true? Then reframe it into a way that's powerful and empowering for you. That really will make you step up into that person you always wanted to be. And that's step number three. Step number four is to rewrite what happened back then the way you wish it would have happened. Because the brain doesn't know the difference, and you know that. The brain doesn't know the difference between reality and not true. So then you rewrite the story the way you wish. Because sometimes, as little children, we think or we analyze or we come to a conclusion about something that maybe was never true. Sometimes kids see the parents' divorce and they think, oh, it's my fault. I did something wrong. As children, we don't know any better. So now it's your time as an adult. You're older, you're wiser, you're more mature, you're like fine wine. It's now it's your time to rewrite it the way you wish it had been. And then you re wire it over and over again. And that is habituation and also hypnosis. You could do it that way over and over again. And then you reprint that into your brain, into your subconscious, into your being. And then you step up and step out into the world as being that new person you've always wanted to be. And in the beginning, you may think, oh my God, that's not true. Or it's imposter syndrome. But give it time, baby, because it will transform. It has taken you 15, 20, 30, 50 years, who knows how many years to Become this person. Give yourself the patience and the love and the grace to step into your power now and move forward. And if at the, in the beginning you see words, you say affirmation, I am powerful. And you're like, no, I'm not. I am smart. I'm so stupid. And you start saying that it's okay. Be patient and have compassion for yourself. And then what you do is you keep doing it over and over again. It's like riding a bike. It takes time to learn it. But guess what? With time, intention, dedication, and love and compassion for yourself, it will transform. And it's just a matter of rewiring yourself. And the way I love to do it is nations, affirmations, subliminals. And in the beginning, you may say, oh, that's not true. And you could say, well, you know what? If it's too powerful or you have too much repel, too much against saying, I am smart or I am powerful or I am successful, you could say, I am choosing to be. That was a way for you to step in without plunging it. I am choosing to feel blah, blah, blah. I'm choosing to be blah, blah, blah. Until you need a gradual step. I like to deep dive, but that's okay. I honestly get to your secret. I listen to my subliminals and my affirmations. It's the audios that I have. And 24-7 with my Bluetooth, I sleep with them. Okay, I'm going to tell you a secret. The only two times I don't wear 
my headphones. That's when I'm taking a shower and when I'm having sex. Those are the only two times. I'm like, they're on me. <laughs> I listen to them all the time. I just take them off for you now, for you, just for you. So there will be no interference. But I still have them on. But literally, I have five pairs all over the house. And I'm always listening to them, always. Because I can't tell you, Peter, I don't wake up in the morning. I literally bolt out of bed. I am so excited about what's come about my extraordinary day. And that takes a little bit of work. But guess what? You, I, and the collective, everyone listening, we are worth it. We only have one life to live. And the thing I say is people are like, I don't have time. You don't have time not to. You don't have time not to. You're going to be with you 24-7 until your last dying breath. So make it the best it can be. I love that framework. (laughs) And I might take a leaf out of your book and try that. We are a walking conversation, but it's the quality of the conversations that we're having whilst we're going about our day, that's so important in terms of having that conversation with the subconscious mind, because 95% of it is running the show. And if you don't take charge and you don't neutralize some of that negative toxicity, then it gets expedited into the unconscious over which you don't have any control over. And this is why people do things and they go, God, I wish I hadn't done that. Oh gosh, I wish I'd made that decision. Oh, that was so stupid of me. When you become much more aware, when you have an awakened awareness and you understand you can have that conversation with your subconscious mind, and I can understand why you use subliminals because that's very powerful and you've got your reticular activating system going. So besides all of that, I love the framework and I love what you're doing. And I think that's contributed to when you get up in the morning is that you're moving into the day with this energy, with this potency, with this power, with this overflow, as distinct from the day moving into you. Because when the day moves into you, like we were talking about earlier, is you make your job, your life, and it's all about crossing the I's, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Whereas when you flip that on its head, you change polarity, you make your life your job. And that means self-care. That means having an ecology of practices, doing your journaling, and all those other aspects are all part of inputting into your own reservoir, filling up your own gas. Because most people are running on empty, and then they're giving, giving, and they wonder why they get stressed and high blood pressure and headaches and all the rest of it, is because they're giving from an empty tank. Anyway, enough of my rants. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love you, Peter. <laughs> As a self-love diva, I love that, from the conversations we've had, you've encountered many challenges or various challenges and obstacles on your journey, as most people have. Can you reflect on a particularly difficult moment in your life and how you overcame it? And how did that experience shape the person that you are today? Wow. Powerful, awesome question. I think one of the the scariest thing I had to deal with, th- th- this many, but I'll tell you one that would help the audience, was that one time when I was leaving my house, I've always been sheltered my whole life. I went from my family's house to be married, never lived on my own really or anything else like that. And even when I got divorced, I went straight to meeting someone and then I moved in with him. So I wasn't used to being alone. And my mother and my grandmother's biggest fears has always been to live alone. They have never spent one day, it's a Spanish family, ever alone. And here I am, I'm in my car and I'm driving and I've never been so scared in my life. Not because I didn't know where I was going. Not because I was leaving the restaurants, my business, my career, everything behind. Not because of that. But because I was sitting there driving and I was about to get onto the road to get onto the highway. And I was paralyzed by fear. Again, not because I didn't know where I was going and I was leaving everything behind. But because I know who I was. I had lost myself in all the yeses. Of course, I'll do anything. What do you want from me? How can I help you? How can I do? Doing everything for everybody that I lost myself. And what I I go back to the night before when I called my ex-husband was because I was tossing and turning back, couldn't sleep. And I went to the bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror and tears were coming down because I didn't recognize the woman staring at me. And I wonder if other people have felt that way too. I'm sure a lot of people in your audience have felt like they didn't recognize. Like, where was all your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, your desires? Where did they all go? They vanished. And they vanished because we stopped caring. We stopped loving ourselves. We stopped 
prioritizing ourselves because as we get older, we have so many other responsibilities. And my focus was now, what do I love? What do I want? Where do I want to go? What, what is my dream? What's my goal? Just like you were saying, we lose ourselves. But then I say the longest journey we ever take wasn't me going cross country. The longest journey we have is a self-discovery of the journey, the 18 inches between our heart and our head. That journey is the most powerful, beautiful journey that transcends everything. And it really is about deep diving into your heart because that's what will make a life worth living. Because and you heard this a million times. At the end of your life, you're not going to be saying, oh, I wish you worked another day. But what about this? At the end of your life, are you going to say, oh my gosh, oh, and I wish I had worried more. I wish I stressed more and, and panicked more and had more anxiety attacks. Ah, that's what I wish I had more of. Damn, I didn't worry though. I got to go back in life and go worry more. No one wants to worry more. They want to enjoy life. It's a process to do that. If you have lost yourself, like I say, tune in, tune up and get turned on to what really rocks your world. And until we do that, we just like fish out of water, floundering around. And that's what my passion is. <laughs> and when you looked in the mirror, who did you want to become? Oh, I wanted to become now the double of diva. I wanted to be this empowered, extraordinary being. And that's why we're like, I say, my best seller, extraordinary, is the best selling on Amazon. Extraordinary beyond belief. The way I felt about myself, the energy, I wanted to take it to the next octave. Because everyone always called me before then, spitfire, sunshine, all this stuff. But it was going on fumes. It was just like, did you have to be putting a happy face? Masks, because we all wear masks with different people for different reasons. I was wearing a mask. Oh, I'm happy as can be. Meanwhile, I was freaking miserable inside. I was. I, but everyone that saw me was like, oh my gosh, she's so happy. She's doing this. She's so successful. But I didn't feel successful until now. Because now the success is not based on what my ex-husband's aspiration was to own restaurants. It wasn't about any of that. It's about what rocks my world. About what my purpose is. Why I came to this world. It's okay for people that want to be restaurant tours, but I don't have a passion for food. I do have a passion. I say that I don't preach religion. I don't preach religion, but I do preach love and self-love. So that's my passion. That's why I came to this world. That's why I wrote the book. That's why I do all these things. That's my passion. And the thing is, we're so out of touch with our passions. We wonder why we feel numb. We numb ourselves. We were talking before the interview. We numb ourselves with drugs, porn, alcohol, sex, shopping, food, whatever it is. We numb ourselves. I call them in my book, Life Stappers. They sap the juice out of our life. They sap everything out of us. They suck the living blank out of us. And that's what I am. So who do I want to become? This is it. The Subtle Diva. I wanted to write. And, and that, oh, this book, my best-selling book, I had this dream when I was 12 years old. I finally accomplished it this year. To be, at, when I was 12 years old, I always said, I want anything to have a best-selling book. And I did it. But it's because I, like you said, I looked at myself in the mirror, I realized what's the most important thing for me. How can I fill myself up? And by filling myself up, people think it's selfish to love yourself. It's not. It's the most unselfish thing, selfless thing you could ever do. Because now I have so much to give. It's amazing. I pinch myself. Like, oh, this, this is my life. What is your book called? Extraordinary You. It's a synergistic approach to transform your life from ordinary to extraordinary. Since I was 12 years old, it was my dream. I dropped it. I forgot about it. I became a financial consultant, a restaurant tour, insurance consultant. I've done so many different things. Again, I did all the right things for all the wrong reasons. I worked my tail off for success. And I never felt successful. I felt like an imposter until now. Because now I'm in the alignment with Echo the, the QT. So QT, because I like acronyms and stuff like that. The QT is the inner child, the adult self, and your higher self. And it's a quantum trinity team, QT. So that's where it is. Quantum oh, Trinity. Nice. Yeah, quant the Trinity. Do you feel now you have more of an internal stability and an outer equilibrium? Yes, absolutely. And that's how you get when you go from the third dimension where everything is so dense and heavy and ego driven. And I work a lot with the ego because my thing is, and we're talking before in our previous time, it's not about killing the ego, but it's about employing the ego, working with the ego. I am a lover, not a fighter, so I'm not going to fight anything at all. But instead, I'm going to love on it and show it how it could work with me, for me, and, and empower me and employ it to work for me rather than fighting against it. Anything you fight against, you put in your energy and attention into that, and you, it's like a boomerang. Instead, I just focus on inner peace and love and 
having that inner faith in whatever it is. Like I said, I don't preach religion. I just preach love. And it's about really being in tune with what will make you feel peaceful. And it's different for other people. Like some people love to meditate. Can you see me sitting down going, mm-hmm. I am so hyper. I'm so excited. But I go on a four mile hike and the whole time I'm with my maladies. And the whole time I'm like just saying affirmations the whole time. And this is how I start my hiking. I call my MMMM, my magical manifesting mountain. I start my hiking and I start with the bees, say all the things I'm grateful for, all the things that bring me joy, all the things that bring me inner peace. Then I transition into things from gratitude into how I would like to envision my life, future pacing it and stepping into that person that I already want to be. Now I don't say I want to. So I future pace into it. When you do things like that, again, we all unique. No one has the same fingerprint. We're all so uniquely, beautifully perfect. So what is that perfection for us? And for some people, it's meditating, which is beautiful to sit there for hours. I can't do more than a couple of minutes. Or it's a walking meditation or the gym or being in nature or swimming or walk, whatever it is. But just do something that really refuels you and nurtures your soul. It's about going from the soul out. The hike you're doing is a walking meditation. The whole imagery of you've got to be sitting down with your eyes closed and chanting something. That may work for some people, but you can do any kind of meditation, a walking meditation. I'm very pleased for you that you now have a more sense of inner beauty. You're more attuned to your own inner beauty because that's attuned to divinity. That's attuned to self-love. And when you can perceive the beauty in everything, you become more attuned to it because you clearly went from chaos to coherence and when you go go into coherence is everything being offset everything starts to align in a particular way and it takes time it takes time but it does happen another thing that comes up in me is there are many distractions and demands on our time today what would be your advice for finding the balance between self-improvement and growth and investing in our relationships. The foundation for an extraordinary relationship is an extraordinary relationship with you first. That is the foundation. That is the cornerstone of every relationship because you can quote unquote spend time with a significant other or a friend or a child or something like that. But until you really first have that foundation of being really real and authentic with yourself, then that gain the best version of you. I really truly believe everything starts with you. But yes, there has to be a balance because you can't be sitting in a mountain all day meditating and then there goes your family and relationships and work and everything. There is a balance. It's different for everybody. It's different for someone who's retired that has much more time than someone who's working a full career and have a single parent or something like that. It's all about balancing. And for instance, maybe some ninja tricks you could do. Like for instance, people say, I don't have time. I'm like, yes, you do. And we're going to make time because the thing is, if you say you don't have time, guess what? You'll waste it away. But if you say you have time, you find time. For instance, I don't remember the last time I brushed my teeth or put makeup on ever without my Bluetooth. Because some of them are subliminal, some are um, spoken. So brushing my teeth, I'm putting my makeup on and it takes a long time. So I'm doing all this stuff and I'm saying affirmations. I'm empowering myself, building up one extraordinary day. Well, I ask myself, I wonder what extraordinary experience I'm going to have today. I wonder, or imagine, and I imagine the days where it's going to be. You're going to be putting your makeup on, or you put your makeup on, or if you're a man, you're shaving, whatever. You talk to your inner child, say, baby, I love you so much. Thank you for always blah, blah, blah. And you just talk to your inner child in a loving, beautiful way. Acting childlike sparks the inner child in you and even in your adult self. Because you establish just tickling, just talking about it. And, and you smile. When I would say, oh, I love you. You merely smile. It puts you in an amazing mood. Take a shower. Hopefully no one stinks you around here. Everybody takes a shower every day. Perfect time for you to say, literally, I take a shower. And when I'm looking at the, at the water coming, I just imagine this golden water coming to me and it's infusing everything in my body and regenerating, revigorating, recharging, refueling myself. I'm going to have an extraordinary day. And I say, thank you for all the things. I have water. Some people like in the war, they, they can't even take a shower. I have hot water. I have everything, electricity. I have the heat or the AC, depending on the temperature. I just say all the things I'm grateful for. Can you imagine when I get out of the shower? I'm, a, I'm high on life, literally. And that's the way we should be. We should all be high on life and love. Not on substance like drugs or alcohol or anything like that, but be high on the beauty, like you said, the beauty of everything in this world.
And especially when you think there's nothing to be beautiful about this wars and stuff, that's especially one ever we need to focus on the love, the gratitude, the beauty in everything we see. People take for granted. They have running water. How many people don't have running water in this, in this world? In different parts of the world, they don't have running water. They don't have water they can even drink, much less bait, much less drink. And the war now, all this stuff happening. More than ever, we need to focus on the beauty in life, the beauty, the love, the things we can be grateful for more than ever. And especially now. And like I said, t- I take in a shower. You and I, most people can take it for granted because we've always had it. But for the people that never had it, that's a huge luxury. So you just imagine when you're taking a shower and you're caressing your skin, you're like, I love you, baby. You're beautiful. I love you. And you caress yourself, you hug yourself. You tell yourself what an amazing person you are. You see the water and you see it falling on you and see yourself being bathed and recharged, rejuvenated, re- refueled and awaken every cell in your life. In your, in your body, it's, it's, it's magical. It's magical the fact that we're alive. It's magical how many cells we have. Every day we have 330 billion new cells every day. And guess what I get to do? And I hope your audience and you get to do it every night. I say, hey, I'm getting 330 billion new cells. So I program those cells every night before I go to sleep. I say to myself, and I'm real big about anti-aging. So I'm like, 330 billion cells, I want you to go through my body and I want you to go and recharge, refuel, regenerate, and rejuvenate and reverse age. All the cells are all no longer at optimal level. And I want you to go in there and fill me with energy and vibrancy. And tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. And if we have any kind of illness, we could say about that particular, send extra cells to that particular illness or whatever it is. And I tell myself, I am waking up full of energy and alive, and I'm going to have an amazing day. So cells, get to work, baby. I love you. I do things to reprogram myself for the new cells and for the way I'm going to wake up in the morning. And that's what I do every night. It's like a little prayer that I say, like a little affirmation, prayer, dedication, intention. That's what I do. Be like, whoa. <laughs> that's important because it's the ability to have cellular mastery and we can influence our cellular life by the thoughts that we have. And as long as they have a coherent intention, if you have coherent intention, things can shift. You mentioned future pacing, which I know is NLP. I've trained in NLP. Lots of it I like. Some of it doesn't gel with me, but I've taken the best out of it. I see your work encompasses a wide range of practices from NLP to Feng Shui. Can you tell us about an event or a realization that led you to explore such diverse areas of personal growth and healing? Yes, it was. Then nothing else was working for me. So when everything goes south, you have to go north. I'm exaggerating because I like to joke around. But when I was working in the financial field, which is beautiful, it's wonderful for people, but it's very left brain and I'm leaning more to a right. So I was being in my masculine energy. I worked in Wall Street and I was one of the only women at that time, a female financial consultant in a room of over 300 men. There were only two women. One was his aunt and myself. That was it. So I was in the mask. I had to go in there and charge. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wow. And at the end of the day, it was just like, what is going on with me? And I realized I needed to have, like you said, balance, more right brain and also more spirituality. So it was all logic. It's about balancing the feminine and the masculine energy. And obviously it doesn't matter whether we're male or female, we have both energies. It's about balancing that. And that's one of the things I do with my work, balancing your energies, because I tend to be a little bit more masculine than most female. So it's about balancing and being in that receptive mode. And that's what made me think, what else is out there? Like you said, I take the best of everything. I fusion what I think what really works. And the rest, I leave it aside. But it's about fusing together that synergy. I'm all about synergy, everything. Two plus two equals a thousand. And that's what I do. And that was my thing. I shifted the way the energy was in my house, the energy of myself. I'm all about energy, vibration. The law of vibration, as you obviously know, it's even the mother of the law of attraction. So it's all about that because we're all energetic beings. And I'm convinced, here I am preaching, our thoughts create our reality. So we get to create with our thoughts. And that's why, and I know you know, but in case your audience doesn't know, experts have different numbers, but approximately 60,000 thoughts a day, of which those thoughts, 80% are negative. And of those 80%, 95% are the same old stinky thoughts. So we get to recreate. That's why I talk about in my six-step process about reframing, rewriting, rewiring. And one of the ways is with the 
affirmation subliminal or spoken. Because one of the ones I, I create is uh, I have a set that is ask affirmation. Otherwise, ask affirmation with asking question. And it has surround sound. So you listen to it. It's like, where is it coming from? And the wonderful thing about that out, and it has brainwave technology. And it has some of the brainwave technology in my audios. So what happens is the left brain, the right brain gets confused like, wait. And that's how it bypasses the conscious. It goes into your subconscious. And that's why I'm high on life because I listen to them all day, every day, whether it's the subliminal ones I have, an eight hour ones a night, or the ones I created spoken ones, 11 minutes, 11 second portals, or the one hour I just listen to spoken, either one all the time. Sometimes I'm brushing my teeth. Like I said, put makeup on and have the spoken ones. And I repeat the affirmation sometimes. Sometimes I'm too busy brushing my teeth to repeat them because I'm going to be making a mess. But that's what it is. It's rewiring, reimprinting, re- reframing everything. We spent our whole lives up until today staying the old stinky thinking. But today we get to put a stake in the ground and we get to empower ourselves and we get to say, this is it. This is my life. And I am creating my extraordinary version of my extraordinary life. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is the way it works. And here I go. And from this moment on, I don't say as much working on myself. I, I get to regenerate, reinvigorate. I get to play with myself in the most outstanding, extraordinary way. I get to play and do a play on life. If you have, and again, I don't know sports, but football, they have a playbook. I don't call it a, a workbook. In my program, it's a playbook. We get to play with ourselves. And we have that inner child. Look, look at your face again when I talk about inner child. You're like, you grind up. So we get to play. It's, the inner child wants to play. And that's what makes us feel inquisitive and wonderful. It's important to reparent that inner child because we know that from zero to seven, the imprint of conditioning, I know as an example, I can't remember the exact stats, but I think it was something like the time you're seven, you hear 8% no. I don't remember the stats, but I think it was way, way more than 8%. I don't know the stats. 80, 80, 80%. Okay, yes. 80%, yeah. Okay, yes. 80% a kid hears no. So in in terms of how that becomes indelibly etched into their neurology and that wiring, because once those neurons wire together, as the physicist said, they fire together, and it's hard to undo that wiring unless you have repetition or you superimpose it with new behaviors new thoughts, new practices, but you have to be consistent with it. That's like you and I, from now on, we get to listen to it all the time, except we take it off to take a shower and have sex. Exactly. <laughs> so it's important to have the consistency and cultivate patience because in a society where we want instant gratification, as distinct from delayed gratification, where when you're dealing with the subconscious mind, you're dealing with the body, you're dealing with your physiology, your emotions. Things do take time. I, I don't buy into this instant mash kind of thing that you put it in the microwave and in two minutes it all happens. That doesn't work with your physiology because you're working with an adaptive natural organism. And you like nature has its time of growth and decay and production. We have to cultivate patience and many people go on a journey of spirituality and growth and personal transformation. And it is important if you are committed to that area of your life. And some people are not. Some people are fine to get their degree, have a job, 2.2 kids, get the white picket fence and lose consciousness after 70 years. They don't belittle those people if that's their life. But I think there's something else. When you're talking about your life, the fact you drove must have been over 3,000 miles, not really knowing where you're going, that takes an incredible leap of faith to do that. But also something's organizing and propelling your soul to make that movement because nothing moves until you make a decision. And you made that decision. You were saying earlier when you were 12, you want to be a best-selling author. And now you are which is fantastic. Your book promises to be a transformative guide for those who feel restless and discouraged or disconnected from their lives. Can you share with us the inspiration behind writing this book and the kind of transformation it can offer to readers? 
Yes, it has over 116, I call it extraordinary sizes, which is 116 in all the different life areas. It's all about where you are right now, the mask we wear, being lost. It was my story too. It's about being lost, not knowing what you want, what's your purpose in life. And we all have that desire for something more. But some of us, like you said, we numb it, we push it aside, and some of us are searching. But sometimes we think it has to be this huge, grandiose thing. And it doesn't have to be that. Everyone, like I said, it's like unique DNA, unique fingerprint. Everyone's unique. It doesn't have to be this huge thing, but it does have to be in alignment with what your heart says. It's calling you. It's about discovering what mask you are, taking the mask off, becoming your authentic self, really pursuing what drives you, that passion within you, and then taking inspired action. Because sometimes we want something and then we get scared, we run away. Or it's a fly or fight. Or the other times what happens is we go a little bit. And as soon as we start getting close and breaking out of our comfort zone, the ego steps in and says, oh, no, warning signs. And then they, you go back into your little box. But it's about stepping outside the box and really taking inspired action and focusing like the future activation and the person you want to become and step into it as if you're already there. That way you have, I call it, we are human GPSs. We put that human GPS in front of us and that's our guiding light, like our beacon, like a lighthouse. And that's what it's all about. And it's about transforming your life, like I said, from ordinary to extraordinary. Whatever that means for you. And that's the important thing. It doesn't have to be this grandiose thing, but it does have to be authentic to who and what you desire and your personal vision, your extraordinary life. So that's what I wanted. I felt, like I said, I was working, I was doing all the right things for the wrong reasons and no amount of success. I was working in Wall Street. I was one of over 300 men, there was only two women. Though I was successful, outside looking in, the car, the house, the husband, everything. And I wasn't because I wasn't in alignment. I wasn't being authentic. I was doing it because it looked prestigious. It looked good on paper. It looked great. Not in my heart. And the most important thing is, what is your heart calling you? Many people are focused on how they look as distinct from how they function. And if you're empty on the inside then the kind of functioning that is happening is one of chaos because there's a hidden cry in you. Even though on the outside, the car, the house, the friends, the money, and all the rest of it is window dressing. That's really all it is. It's so important to understand in oneself what that hidden cry is and to be able to emerge from that with authenticity. Were there any personal experiences or moments in your life that inspired you to create this comprehensive GPS, this road for transformation? How did your journey shape the content of your book? Because I'm very private. I don't have as much stories in the book about my life because I want it to be more like a working playbook, a manual for people to be able to transform. So it's more from that perspective than talking about me. However, like I said, I was in the dark night of the soul. I was really struggling with what it was I wanted, where I wanted to go, all this stuff. So I realized that because nothing else could make me happy from the outside, it had to be an inside job. And that's what I did was I took all the best of everything I could understand. My book was mostly a download. It was things that I experienced, but it was mostly how can this that I did for myself help other people? So I came from a perspective. It's not, the book is not really about me as much as it's about others. Again, back to my quantum self-love movement, which is to inspire people to do a self-loving deed for themselves and to pass it forward so we create love, light, unity. So the book is mostly focused on how they, the individual reader, can transform the life, how they can see life differently, how they can take off the mask. So it wasn't so much about me talking about me taking off my mask because I'm pretty private, but it was about the steps I took and how they can do it. So it's more like a how-to manual, more so than about my biography or story about me. Like I said, it was basically being so lost. I got up and I looked at myself in the mirror. I didn't recognize when you feel like empty inside because I say the, the eyes in the mirror to the soul. And I was looking in the eye. I was looking at myself, who am I? What happened to all my dreams? What happened to helping people? What happened to all these things? How did I get so lost? How did I get so off track? And then I'm thinking, what can I do? And the steps I did for me to overcome, that's what I put in the books so other people can also learn. And in terms of designing in quotes, an ideal life. Because one of the goals you mentioned in your book is quantum leaping forward as you design your ideal life and career. Can you provide an example or insight into how someone 
can take the first step towards designing their ideal life, even if it feels out of reach. One of the things is they have to step one, become aware. What is it? Go back in time and reflect on what it was when you were a child. What do you want to do? Because sometimes we want so many things we want to do and we get brainwashed before the age of seven or whenever, because people tell us you can't do this, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? You're not smart enough. So it's very important to find out what it is that would light you up, what would inspire you. And we do that in that book with exercises such as journaling. Also in my program, they have a whole bunch of different questions. So I have a free gift, which in the free gift, it'll even ask some of the ask formations that you could ask yourself questions. Like I wonder what would light my fire. So you have asked yourself questions And that's in the book about what would light you up, what would inspire you, what would turn you on. From there, you have to have the mindset, the confidence that you can do it because you can't. You absolutely can't. We all can do whatever we say our minds to, but we have to put that intention, that direction and have a blueprint and what it is that we want. Then once we get what we want, then we reverse engineer, which is NLP, reverse engineer what it is we want. So if we want to do something, then we go back. What are the steps? And then we start from there forward into becoming who we want to be. And along the way, working with the mindset, because that's why self-love is so important, because we can say we want to do anything. We can set a goal, but if we don't have the self-love to keep propelling us, to believe we can, then we repel it. Because energetically, we think, I would really like to be a CEO of my company. I would really like a promotion. I would really like whatever it is. But inside, we don't feel good enough or feel worthy of deserving. We either self-sabotage, our ego self-sabotage, we stop ourselves on our tracks, or our energy repels it. Because you walk into a room many times and you feel the energy doesn't feel right. You meet someone and you may want to give them a job offer, but something about the energy is, I don't know, I want to work with this person. Energy can repel people and opportunities. So it's very important to be, like I said, in alignment. So what it is we want and believe in ourselves. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, we're fighting the current and it's really hard. So... With me, it's about doing everything like, the, I call it the easy button. I know what you say about instant gratification, which I, I, I totally get that. Because now everything on YouTube or anything you watch at anywhere, on TV, anywhere you watch things, newspapers, everything. It's like instant gratification. In 10 minutes, you're going to change your life, whatever it is, transform your life. And it's not like that. And then it's say 21 days. In 21 days, experts, top experts and scientists and researchers have realized that to change an ingrained habit or function or way of being or whatever it is, behavior, it takes 66 to 365 days. So 21 days, you're starting the process, but to really ingrain and cement it, to become totally automatic, usually takes 66 to 365 days. I know you know that, but I'm saying this for the audience that may not know that because I know you're brilliant. (laughs) So anyway, so having said that, yes, I don't believe in instant gratification, but it is redoing it, re-imprinting over and over again. And I believe in the easy button, which is affirmation, subliminal, spoken. So you always have in the background and hypnosis. Dr. Bruce H. Lipton says the two best way to reprogram the mind is habituation and hypnosis because it goes into your subconscious. So that's what I do. I do with future pacing, future activation. I also come up with this thing called Hype Me Ups because I tell you all the acronyms. Hype Me Ups is a hybrid that I created between Hypnosis and meditation and up is raising your vibration up. So it's hype me ups. Mm. So yeah, so I do hype me ups and mm. that takes into the six step process in a hypnotic state, meditative hypnotic state. And it's a guided meditation, hypnosis, and it takes into a six steps and that's how they work through it. What it is they want to become and they focus on that. And then when they come out of it, then they can start taking a blueprint of expired like actions to get to where they want to go. Did that answer your question? Because I went rambling on. <laughs> That's fine. This is a ramble. It's absolutely fine. We're just having a conversation here. And it's like being dropped into a big city. But you get dropped into a big city, then you explore a neighborhood and you might go down an alleyway or you might go down another street. or So, it, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the nature of it is like being dropped into a big city, really. And you don't get to explore. Keep, let's explore. Exactly. And this is an exploration. In your journey of becoming the self-love diva, who were the most significant influences or role models in your life? And if there were any, how have they shaped your approach to mentoring and guiding others? Wow. My grandmother, she, she was huge, amazing, strong, beautiful woman, who told me so much about love and unconditional love. Because after the way my grandfather, her husband, she was able to forgive him. And people were like, how can you forgive him? He should be dead, all this stuff. 
my grandmother, I call my grandmother mom. My grandmother was saying, I'm not God. I'm not judge and jury. I let whatever happens. I'm staying centered in love. And she taught me the power of gratitude and forgiveness. Because like I say, most people like, they thought she was nuts. Like, how can you forgive that? And my grandmother goes, I'm not God. I'm not here to judge. I will forgive for my own sake so I can move on with my life. And that's what I feel. It's like sometimes we hold on to anger and resentment and bitterness and victimhood and all this stuff. And it's poison to yourself. Not it's to- cha- well, it breeds chaos. It doesn't yeah. breed coherence. It breeds chaos. Yeah. As we're and seeing in the world today. Exactly. And then when we keep focusing on all the anger, all the stuff they did poor me, like you said, neurons are fired together, wired together. So it gets stronger and it becomes a hatred because more and more stronger and more embedded in you. And it becomes a way of being. It's like a cancer, like a toxin that you're poisoning that you have in your body. And it's only killing you. You're robbing yourself of life and you're giving them the power. So it's all about you taking your power back and you forget, not to forget, not to condone it, but you can do it for yourself. It's an act of compassion and grace over yourself. And that is the most beautiful thing we could do is forgiveness. Taught me about gratitude. Be grateful no matter what. Even after all the things that happened to her, she was still in a state of gratitude. She was chuckling. I'm alive. I can breathe. I can this, I can that. And it's well, looking for the little things like that that transform the way you feel and your energy. And then you start attracting more. Same thing when you have that hatred, people can just sense that energy. They may not know what's going on, but they sense it. But when you have that forgiveness, that love, that compassion, that empathy, that joy within you. So she was huge. And my mom took a lot of that for my grandpa and for my daddy. Oh, I love my daddy. My daddy is the most amazing. He's awesome. He's always happy. He's always smiling. He's always looking at positive things. Even when he gets in trouble with my mom, not for real stuff, but like he forgets to do something. When he's older, he forgets to do something, crazy stuff. And daddy goes, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I love you. So it's just the amazing child. Like he's like a child in a beautiful way. And he's always happy and looking for optimism. And I got spanked one time my whole life. My dad was the most amazing guy. He was patient. The world could be falling apart. He'd be like, okay, just even kill. And that's amazing how you can do that. So my, my family was amazing. It, but when it comes to closeness, the foundation was there. And that's why I feel so blessed because many people don't have that foundation. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, it's so important for me to instill in them that who they are now, it's quote unquote not their fault. It was their pre-programming. But who you decide to be from this point on now that you're aware, it's up to you. It's your responsibility. Your energy is your responsibility. Your personal growth is your responsibility once you become aware. What happened to you when you were a child, you couldn't have any control over. But it's up to you now to really take charge of your life because you know why? Each and every one of us is worth it. We are so worthy and so deserving and so more than good enough to create an extraordinary life. We really are. We really, <laughs> we really are. <laughs> yeah. You know, Peter's like, I don't know what to say about that one. <laughs> There's lots of things I could say, but I'm sitting with what you're saying because it speaks to me of, uh, I think I said to you off air that you have this weave relationship, like a loom where you're weaving all these different strands, but your weave relationship is with a hidden light and that light emits a frequency, not a chemistry, but a frequency that enables and empowers others to light up their own darkness. When you cultivate your inner community to create inner stability, it helps to promote an outer equilibrium. And that outer equilibrium can manifest as a community because your inner community, as you talked about earlier, you have to work with yourself first. If you want to give, you've got to fill up your own reservoir. So the community aspect of things the outer community and inner community, when they blend, it creates and fosters a strong sense of immunity. And that's immunity from one's thoughts, immunity from one's habits, immunity from one's emotions, not in terms of pushing them away, like trying to hold a beach ball under the water. It's understanding that you can be a compassionate witness to all these things. And when you have people around you in community, you have that strong connective fiber where you support each other so that if I'm doing something 
I'm not just doing it for me. I want it for you as well, if that's what you want for you. So there's a law of reciprocity going on here and a mutual co-shaping because the universe does holism, which is what health really is, is holism. And when we address the whole, yes, and I, I talked about instant gratification, delayed gratification, I know with the right manifestation, things can happen quite quickly, but we don't have the mindset of, I want, it's more from the standpoint that we don't wait for the hand to reach down. We reach up first. We don't wait. And by reaching up the other hand as above, so below, then when they join, there's a tuning that goes on because there's a resonance, there's a frequency, there's a vibration that acts in sympathy and in resonance with each other. And that's the alignment. That's the tuning that goes on. Like the old radios, where you had to try and tune, get the dial and tune into the frequency. And if you missed it a little bit, you'd get static. But if you hit the mark arc of the reception, you tuned. And that's what we're doing, even on this podcast, and what you're doing with the work that you do. That's what I wanted to say to you. And I think that there's much, much more that can come out from you. Because I'm very curious about your personal motivations. No, not your motivation, but more about your personal drive and what drives you on a personal level to continue helping people to transform their lives and find self-love. That's an easy question. Because like I said before, it's my MVP, my mission, my vision, my passion, my why. It's because I've been on the other side. I've been feeling depressed and feeling anxious and stressed out and anxiety and overwhelmed and overcommitted, overworked and overexhausted. And I know what it feels like. And that sense of desperation that you want something more, you want more joy in your life because life is meant to be more than that. Coming from that standpoint, just feeling depressed and is this all there is? From that point is I was able to find the tools and the strategies. And I looked and I read over a thousand books, countless seminars, certifications, everything to transform myself. And now my MVP, Mission Pastor, is to help others who may not have the time that I did. It was a luxury that I was able to leave everything behind. Some people can't. They can't leave the husbands and their little kids and their dogs and their pets and stuff. I had a luxury that I just left everything behind. And I know that I was blessed and I am blessed. That was able to have the luxury of being able to that most people can't. That's why if they can't do the physical journey of just dropping everything and starting all over again and reinventing themselves, then with my book, with my tools, they can reinvent themselves from the inside out. And it's dropping into the heart. They don't have to go on the long journey of self-discovery. The self-discovery is within. They just have to drop into the heart. And they don't need to spend all the time and start all over again. When I can give them the fast track, but the easy button, which is the hypnosis, the hype me up, the audios, all those stuff. When they can do something like that, that they could do on their own and their own self pace or with me working with them. That is what lights me up. It's seeing the transformation of the people to be able to have that joyful life because I think it's a disservice to ourselves, to our loved ones, to our community, to the world, to whoever we believe in, higher consciousness, to keep ourselves small or from growing, or in a box because we are afraid, or because we're overwhelmed, and having a less than life than we really deserve to. And our contribution is being the best, higher self of ourselves, and we can only do that when we step into that. And this is a way to do it without having to drop everything and just start all over again. It's a way to start where you are now and reinvent yourself from here on, reprogram yourself from back then. It's not your fault where you are now. It's only your fault if you choose to not do anything going forward. What you experienced when you were a child and the programming you had, subconscious programming. It's 95% of who we are, what we do, it's automatic pilot. It's up to us to re-imprint, re-wire, reframe everything into a way that empowers us so we can really have an impact on ourselves and everyone around us. And that is our contribution because you were talking about weaving. I believe we're like this magical, magnificent tapestry together. Some of us haven't recognized that yet. Now, how interconnected we all are and how we feel like you were talking about frequency and vibration, which is brilliant. And I think Nikola Tesla knows a thing or two about frequency and energy. He said, think of the universe, energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's what we are. And that's how we attract. And that's how we attract the people, the circumstances. So if you want an easier life where you get to attract more joy and happiness and ease and flow and grace, 
It's all about you raising your vibration, your energy, your frequency, and then doing it for yourself, but also for the wholeness, like you said, the wholeness of everyone. Because everything we do is, has a ripple effect and everything else, our energy goes out way beyond. Everything we do, everything we say has a ripple effect into the universe. Well said, beautiful. What's your ultimate vision for the impact you want to make in the world through your work and your teachings? The quantum self-love movement, like I said before, to inspire A plus million. I say plus because I'm going to keep increasing with every breath I take. Inspire A plus million people to do a self-loving deed for themselves, then to do something to pass it forward to someone else and keep it going. So we have that heart center, heart connection, human connection of love, light, and unity. And that's what lights me up, and inspires me. That would be my contribution, my legacy, and is to have people understand how self-love is a foundation for everything and the impact that everything we say and do and behave, everything, our energy, everything has a ripple effect throughout the world. It's about living life to the fullest because we are worthy. Just the fact that, like I said before, the fact that we are alive, there's a higher purpose for that. And we should discover what that purpose is, whatever it is for each of us, no matter how small or grand. The most important thing is that you're living in inspiration. And that's with spirit, in spirit. Whatever you aspire to be, step out, step up, and live the best that you can. That is your biggest contribution. Whatever that is, every single day, being the best that you can be, that could be a purpose all of its own. It is a purpose all of its own. Because every time you step out, you get someone a compliment, you make someone smile, anything like that. It doesn't have to cost you money. But it's about the generosity of love and heart and spreading that love out into the world, radiating that energy out. That changes people, the energy, the world. It has a massive impact. And sometimes we think it has to be this huge thing. But just giving someone a rose or, or a note or a compliment, smiling at someone, anything. I've heard stories of people that thought they were going to kill themselves. And someone bumped into them and said something to them and it changed their lives. Can you imagine? We all realize the impact that our words, our behavior, our physiology, everything about us has such an impact on everything else. Everything we do has a huge impact on everything else. So it's about the awareness that we're superhuman. We are in, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. And I'm never speechless. How much we can do, we don't realize how powerful we are. You're talking about complete permeation. Because that's what inspiration does. It seeps into people's sinews and it permeates them and they carry that divine spark forward. And what's your definition of self-love? My definition of self-love is such an unconditional, unwavering love for yourself that has 100% compassion, forgiveness, no judgment, is an energy of being authentic with your inner quintity, which is the quantum trinity self, trinity team which is about the inner child, the adult self, and the higher self, being in alignment, being in tune. And when you have all that quadra trinity team together and we're in alignment, we are invincible. We are magical. We have that inner self-love because can you imagine your inner child loves you so much? And the adult self, we're all in alignment. It's like having that motherly love, that amazing connection. And then the higher self, what? That is divine. That's divinity. That is self-love. It's truly unconditional, unwavering love for yourself regardless of everything. That's beauty. And where can people find you and where can people purchase your book? I would love more than anything to people to have a taste test, an experiment and a taste of my audios. Because like I said, I don't have any addictions except ice cubes. And I love listening to my audios because I know what they do because I'm a living proof of it. So I would love for people to go to extraordinaryyou.com forward slash we get. And what they would get is when they go there is all your state, 11 minutes, 11 second portals. It's spoken, affirmation, surround sound, the subliminal version of 11, 11 minutes, the one hour spoken, the eight hours so they can sleep with it all night. They also get a future activation. It's not a hype me up. So that's part of my program. But the, the future activation is where they get to step into the future of what they were like. It works with the chakras, but the important thing is to listen to it and they get a taste test of what the audience alike and everything else and what I'm about. That's why I would love for people to do more than anything to go to extraordinaryyou.com forward slash free gift. And they could get the gifts. They can download and listen to them and they could also get high on light. <laughs> or go to my selflovediva.com website. They could get it there too because there's a pop-up that they could sign up for. Do you have any passing words at all? Yes. You are so worthy. You are all so deserving. You are all so more than good enough. 
and you deserve to invest in yourself until your last dying breath. The most important thing is to truly, unconditionally, unwavering, love yourself and then radiate that love out into the world and have that ripple effect and just really understand how more than good enough we really are. And that is it. We delve deep into some of your personal journey and your diverse approach to self-love and empowerment. And I've gained valuable insights into your transformative work. And I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you, Jacqueline, for joining us on the podcast and sharing your wisdom and your experiences and your expertise. And your journey, dedication to guiding others is truly inspiring. And I'm grateful for your time today. And for listeners, I hope you found today's conversation as enlightening and thought-provoking as I have. Jacqueline has shared profound insights and self-love, healing and personal growth that we can all apply in our lives. We just have to have that coherent intention. So remember, the journey to self-love and empowerment is ongoing, but it's one that's worth embarking upon. So let's take the wisdom and techniques shared today to heart and start your journey towards a more filling and empowered life. And I'm sure we'll be back with more inspirational discussions. So until then, take care and keep nurturing that self-love. Jacqueline, thank thank you you so much much for your life work. Thank you. This is your life work and your legacy. And we are so blessed to have you in this world, being a light and beacon. Thank you for all the work you do for us. Thank you. Oh, very kind. Thank you so much. That's it for today's episode of Transcendent Minds. We hope you enjoyed this exploration of the mysteries of the mind and the human experience. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, we would love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And if you feel inclined, please leave a rating and a review as this goes a long way. And follow us on social media to stay up to date with the latest episodes. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep transcending your mind.